All right, everybody, we're going to go to round two, segment two, episode number two. <laughs> All right, everybody. Maywish is here and Crosby is here. Veronica, Veronica is here. Kenny is here. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. Get myself situated here in a moment. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. This is free TV, so you will see things that make no sense. But um, you're going to see some things that will also be funny. We are, as I look over here, and he's going to be joining us any moment. Uh, you're a sweetheart, and thank you very much. Uh, be yourself. Nobody's perfect. It is an honor to be here with the lady herself. She will be joining us in a moment. I just want to remind everyone about tomorrow. Hold on. And he's talking to me. Ah, there she goes. All right. So tomorrow, just so you know, before we bring Annie in, uh, the Coach Jess show. The Coach Jess show will be airing tomorrow here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Presently, right now, you're watching Narc Abuse TV show. The network has its own shows that will be on it for you to enjoy. The first one is the Coach Jess show. Relationships, resiliency, recovery. Uh, she will be talking about those things right now. I must bring in our beautiful and lovely, wonderful guest, straight shooter herself. I just love saying that. Annie. Let's get Annie in here. Oh my goodness. There is our special guest for you for those of you who missed it. That's Basil. And he's having fun, but he's probably hungry, huh, Annie? He's um he's had his supper and he's now grooming his monkey. <laughs> oh man, why did you do that? <laughs> okay, yes. everyone. I knew I knew at some point I would be speechless and it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, welcome to free TV here on the internet. <laughs> it's uh you know what? No one can top what you just you just put us through right there. <laughs> All right. Think of a segue. Think of a segue, Paxton. Think of a segue. All right. So we're Sorry, gonna be Paxton. talking we're gonna be talking boundaries. How how interesting. <laughs> oh man. All right. Uh you just made the chocolate man blush. Okay, so <laughs> I'm all of a sudden. It's not my intention. It was an innocent remark. I was just informing you what he's actually doing. You did. were doing your innocent remark of information that yes. obviously I need to segue because something's evidently wrong with me. I know everybody's going to say that. All right. So um, I just want to say, let me get my camera thing in here pretty good. Everyone has been uh, piling in so that they can uh, talk to you, hear from you, and uh, shed. Uh, some of their narcissistic dead weight of information get it off their chest. Mm -hmm. um, people are always looking for healing, aren't they, uh, from yeah. emotional abuse um, and ways that they can connect with individuals that help them heal. Uh, you've had an interesting journey doing that, huh? It's a hugely rewarding journey, yes. Yeah. Um, there are layers and layers and layers of healing. So some people get as far as they can at one point and then they have to come back and do more. But I think the point about healing is that when we start, we think, God, this is a journey 
and therefore because I'm a mess it's going to be painful and life will begin when I've finished healing but the reality is that healing I believe can be a hugely joyful and exhilarating experience that's the way I like to think I make it for my clients um, it is it is a void of self-discovery it is a void of being able to connect safely with the world it's a voyage of actually finding your place in the world um so it's really a very powerful thing most of the time most of the time let me get this in here most of the time people find that they're they don't feel they're living until it's like you mentioned till it's done mm. so they're like i'm done i've got them out of my system mm. does it ever really get out of one's system yeah absolutely Okay. It, and it can get out of your system quite quickly when you start to shift the focus back to yourself and self-compassion. Um, the whole thing is you don't want to be fighting with yourself. Um, you know, if you don't want to be fighting to do the thing that you cannot do, you have to learn how to be with yourself and respectful towards yourself, even when you're not where you want to be, and that's okay because it's all part of the journey. Okay, so I want to take a brief moment to talk about that. I did. I like what you just said. To to be with oneself, to mm. be respectful to mm. oneself, mm. even if you're not where you expect or want to be. Yeah. How can a person really have some self control to do that when they're anxious to get the past out of their mind? Um, because being anxious to get the past out of your mind doesn't achieve anything. It just reminds you that you're failing. Um, and really, you have to accept what is. Um, I've worked with a few clients who've had issues where they found it very hard to let go of an abusive person. And you don't say, well, you must let go. What's wrong with you? You can't let go. You go, you say, yeah, I get that. That's okay. Let's work on what we can now. All of this is helping you to get to where you want to go. And all that we're doing is looking at you with compassion, getting you to understand, to be comfortable. Um, Acceptance is much more powerful than fighting something. Okay. It's much more freeing. Right. But you learn acceptance when you have to. When there's nothing else, you learn to accept. Yeah, uh, on the screen, uh, so much, uh, of course, is, is starting to mm. uh, roll in. Uh, I'm going to pick something here. Um, mm. uh, Vinoy says, uh, how can one be respectful of themselves? Uh, they want you to expound on that a little bit more. Just please give examples okay. of what you mean. Uh, in a moment, we're going to be discussing more about boundary, boundaries. Yeah. But right now, uh, feel free to, she's looking for some examples that she can grab onto. Well, instead of giving you an example, first off, I want to ask you something, which is, are you prepared to do more for someone that you really respect and value? or for someone that you hate and, mm. you know, have no respect for. If Very you good treat us, Yeah, and that really just sums it up. If you're not prepared to care about yourself enough to show yourself some respect, how the hell do you imagine that you're going to be able to work with yourself su successfully because you're just actually replicating the abuser's abuse abuse inside yourself and saying to yourself all the things that they said you're replicating that abuse inside of we would be doing that inside of ourselves yeah that's a great point mm -hmm. most of the time people feel the abuse though it may come from the outside they don't recognize we may not recognize we start to pick up that mantle totally. we pick up that bat and start to beat ourselves inside Absolutely. You know, all the things that you say to yourself are the things that an abuser has said to you at some point. Um, 
there was a woman I was working with today and she said, I, you know, I don't want to walk down the street because I feel uncomfortable about my body. People will be thinking things about my body that are not nice. Mm. And oh. I said to her, how will you even know? All that you know is the attack thoughts that you have inside your head. True. So yeah. true. Mm -hmm. But we can start to build up a fantasy or a, a series of thoughts that are not factually based. Absolutely. And we'll live off of that. Totally, yeah. And therefore, it's really important not to say, oh, God, you're stupid for having these thoughts, because that doesn't help you at all. Yeah. No, no. It's just, gosh, I really understand that you're hurting, that you're telling yourself these old thoughts. I hear that. It's okay. It's not where you want to be. It's okay. And, and when a person takes the time to be with oneself, be kind to oneself, work on what you can, is what you just highlighted to us. Mm it becomes much easier than to live life not being hungry for love or chasing it all the time. Yeah. Looking to think outside of oneself that I got to get someone else's validation or exactly. acceptance and love of me because you know what? I'm not a bad person. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty exactly. decent. Yeah. Uh, there's some, there's some nice good points about me and I don't need someone else to point them out to me all the time. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't take a compliment of course, but. Absolutely, but you don't have to beg for it from from someone. Right, and you've done a lot of work with women, uh, especially mm -hmm. when you were getting started. Uh, as I mentioned in the first segment, a number of videos, looked at a number of videos. Have you seen this to be a common trait for, for many women to not spend time with self and, well, how'd you put it? Work on what you can. They keep struggling for something that's outside of what's right in front of them? Yeah, I think it's almost universal, if not universal, that they, and a lot of the time when I write posts like this on Instagram about you've got to stop hating on yourself, you've got to stop yeah, using yeah. those things to yourself, they, people just don't even get what I'm talking about because that is their normal. You know, yes, I'm vile to myself 1,500 times a day, isn't everybody? Well, actually, a lot of people are, actually, but it does no, make it right. <laughs> per se. Mm -hmm. There are those that are not. Yes, that's right. And we um, don't have to, they don't have to, no, please go ahead. You were going to say. Well, I often quote the example of my lovely partner because I now have a really lovely partner. And people tell, go on about all this stuff going on in their head. And they say, doesn't everybody do that? And I said, no, not at all. When I met my partner, I was quite stunned because he's a very tranquil person. And, and he has intelligent thoughts. He has brain thoughts going through his head. And in between time, he just settles into this pleasant place of, it's so nice, the weather's sunny, you know, the... Yeah grass is green he doesn't have that stuff and we're not meant to have that stuff yeah. right. yes not 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 meant to carry that around absolutely it because is not life becomes heavy life becomes heavy and everything that's beautiful and light and and smells absolutely. good we will miss it because we're so weighed down yeah. with the unnecessary thing yeah, and your whole bandwidth is taken up with it, which is why you feel exhausted and stressed and have yeah. no motivation or anything yeah. because it's just all consuming and that's not how it's meant to be. Right. And to navigate away from that, mm -hmm. sometimes we may need boundaries with ourselves because the way you just mentioned, I'm just going to say these three things that I pulled out, being with self, being kind to self and work on what you can now that's kind of like setting up a boundaries, internal boundary with oneself so that you don't go down the rabbit hole of negativity. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes clients say to me, isn't that running away? And the answer is mm. no, it's not. Mm. Running away is avoiding a difficult issue. Shutting down a repetitious dialogue where you're saying the same thing to yourself 1,900 times a day or whatever that serves no useful purpose.
which is the thing that everybody needs and no space between them and you sorry i was just yattering because you seem to have gone off yeah for some reason or another it uh now we're back uh go yes. ahead you were doing quite well without me so go right ahead <laughs> <laughs> i find it much much easier with the interaction i was sort of I, going oh. i i just want i just want you to know you get to do a first with the dog in the first segment and the first ever in in 300 some odd episodes in which my guests actually continue to enjoy the show without me. So, <laughs> so you're just, I can't wait to see if there's anything else that will happen later on, but go right ahead, please. Yes. I'm quite I sure also I'll... Sorry. Go ahead. No, go I ahead. also managed to make you blush. <laughs> yes, you... <laughs> wait, hold on, wait. I, I'm still recuperating from, from that. Now that you mentioned it, now I'm doing it again. Okay. By all means, <laughs> con continue on without, without me interrupting. Uh, no, I would much rather do this <laughs> together. So, um, yeah, I was just, because I, as far as I could tell, people could hear me, so I kept going. Y in, yes, you yeah. did quite well, because I couldn't hear anyone or see anything, and then all of a sudden, it all came back. So, um, yeah. unless I was getting a, a great call from somebody that I didn't want to talk to, because I'm with you. But go right ahead. You're, you're it. So, and we'll get to yeah. some of these questions, too, that are here uh, when, when you get a moment. But go ahead. Right. So what I was saying is that people say you should have boundaries, people, but nobody tells you what a boundary is or how to do it. So in order to, you know, in order to have boundaries, you've got to understand what they are and how they benefit you. And I did actually write, a, create a program about that, which seems to resonate. But basically a boundary is the space that you decide you want between yourself and another person. You are not one amorphous maps. You're not one great gloop. Um, if someone is in your life, you decide how close they get to you and what is and is not acceptable in terms of behavior. So that's why you have boundaries. The to... <laughs> <laughs> we're, okay, we're having fun because yeah. when you just got a call or something or something happened there. That was. Okay. Uh, it was my phone saying to me that I've got twenty percent battery, which should uh -oh. last a while. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So you just boundaries are there to serve you, keep you safe, and ensure that the relationships that you have are rewarding to you. So. If you know how to do a boundary, someone toxic comes along and they start trying to edge in too close into your space and you just say, not on. And there are plenty of formulae you can use for it, but it's being aware that they are intruding and feeling confident that you can say, back off. This is my space. You don't come into it. And no, I don't have to feel guilty because right. you've got your own space, deal with it, Buster. Right. And Buster needs to know that they can't continue to keep coming back after you set up the boundary, and then we can't start weakening the boundary, and then yeah. now they recognize if they just pummel us enough or keep making a request that we will give in. Well, I think the point with narcissists is they've got an experience of people caving in when they push oh, so it. you have to be firm and normally that will work once or twice because let's face it nobody's so interesting that a narcissist is going to go for undue trouble if he can go else he or she can go elsewhere 
Um, but with a long-term narcissist, somebody who's been in your life for a while, they have an experience that they just push, 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 you cave. And so they quite like the challenge of you being a little bit more difficult. A client of mine is taking her husband to court for violence because he deserves it. He's been violent. And he well. literally is trying to get her to go back on it, to get, you know, take, throw away the um, charges and take him back. He says, I think we need to go to marital therapy together. Oh, okay. Um, but because he's been so used to oh, violating her boundaries, he can't get it. that She is now going to stand firm and this will not work. Right. And, and a lot of times that's what has to happen for yeah. the violating to stop, yeah. is that someone has to stand firm. But they also maybe have to, please correct me, because you're the expert. I'm just saying a person also has to be mindful that they can't weaken as time goes on because no. then the narc sees a new door open. Yes, this is this whole thing that you get with people who are talking about, I went on no contact and we're, now we're speaking. That's not no contact. Right. It's like if you're an alcoholic, you do not drink again. Because if you drink again, you will get, you'll fall back. You are an alcoholic for life. A narc mm -hmm. is a risk to you for life. If you have to co-parent, wow. there are ways of doing that. But if you have the opportunity of never speaking to that person again, that's the one to go with. Because right. otherwise because they will mess with your head. They, because they want to keep coming back to do that, right? To mess with yeah. one's head, with their heart. Yeah. But they're yeah. going to use, the, if they have to co-parent, then they're going to use the children as as a weapon more, or a, they're not going to be looking to nurture the children. No. Well, they need well, the photo ops. Um, okay. But beyond that, they will use the children to twist the knife in you if you let them. So, yes, they will be vile and they'll come out with loads of dross every time you speak to them. So the question is, why are you even talking to them? Huh, good point. You have to have interactions about the child, but those can all be done written um, by email. And when children are of a certain age, you don't have to have interactions with them at all. But you certainly don't need to speak to them about anything other than the issues. You don't want to know about their weekend. You don't want to know about their holiday with their new girlfriend. You don't want to know about any of this rubbish. It's irrelevant. Yeah, you it know, reminds... and... No, sorry. Sorry. please, go ahead, please. And you certainly don't want to hear how they love the new person much more than they ever <laughs> loved you. You know, uh, who yeah. cares? You don't it's need not to true. Be, you don't need to be fodder, fodder for all of that, that garbage mm. because... Going back to your videos, one of your videos highlighted that we need to be reasonable when we're dealing with an art. Uh, we need to uh, be reasonable or show reasonableness. Uh, only deal with factual stuff. You highlight it. Yeah. No expectation. You, you yeah. mentioned. Don't walk in with your parenting with them. They don't believe in parenting as the way you kind of alluded to that. Don't expect mm -hmm. them to be trying to be a parent. That's not, well, like you said, photo op. They, yeah. they just want the children because it's it's, the children are attached to you. Uh, yes. and, and be careful. You said don't or never show them your emotions. Make yeah. sure that you're not giving them an opportunity to get into your mind mm -hmm. or your heart. Absolutely. You have to develop this sort of benign idiot routine with them <laughs> so that... They can oh. say anything to you about their life, and you go, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I love the way you do that. I'm going to start a whole line of shirts called I'm an Idiot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag uh, nar nar see my narc or something like that. That We have to play an idiot, essentially, is what you're saying. Yes. There's a very old English carry-on film. It was very bad comedy and I think it was carrying up the Kazi, it was the one about toilets and there's a very okay. well known English actress called Hattie Jakes mm -hmm. 
Okay. And in it, she's largely sat on a sofa and literally responded to her husband that way. He was, a, he was always running after other women. And she just sat there and said, yes, dear, no, dear. That's lovely. And it's really worth watching it for the Hattie Jakes character. You just how to be this incredibly boring person. That is grey rocking at its best. And when it comes to boundaries that we have for ourselves, internal boundaries, boundaries that we make so that we secure an emotionally safe space for ourselves from others, mm. we we need to make sure we don't let them down. But if we have to deal with them, you're saying we must become professional grey rockers. Yeah, absolutely. You deal with the facts and beyond that, it doesn't matter what kind of idiot they think you are. The less satisfaction they can get from you, the better. There was one client of mine who um, had this person who was annoying her. And so she started replying to him, I have this pigeon. It comes to my balcony every day. I think we're building up a relationship. And she would always fill him in on the pigeon. She didn't care less about the pigeon, but, you know, he lost the will to live virtually. <laughs> Why do I feel like that's the skit from some British show that I often watch? Because that's what it's... That is really good. I yes. think everyone to just start using the pigeon. If, if you're, quote unquote, an empath or a victim of abuse, you should just start using the pigeon when you start talking to, to the abuser. And mm -hmm. if everyone does it, all the narcs will know that everybody's on the same page, that we figured them out when we start talking about this pigeon that we're having a relationship <laughs> with. That, is just, that would just get a, all across the globe. Everybody should just start talking about a pigeon when the narc starts being weird. Uh, you got a couple of questions that I need to pull in here. Hopefully I can still pull them up after our, my little debacle on the Internet there. Um, okay, first one. Why do men ignore my boundary even after I told him exactly what it was? Because that's not the point. It's just like you tell. It's, it's show, not tell. Look, I'm telling you, you can't do that. Really, yeah. that's so interesting. Let me see if I can. Let me see now, if I can. Now, if you've got a small child, you don't say, don't do that, and then accept that they do do that if you want to bring up a civilised child. Right. They know that there are limits and that when they overstep those limits there will be consequences same goes with for a narcissist um that you will have less nothing to do with them if they can't behave properly and that's only if you have to have anything to do with them at all but if when they don't stick by your rules they have no access to you now guilt and shame starts to creep in for some people when they need to put their foot down, as it were, and mm. hold their boundary in place. Mm. That has, in many cases, a lot to do with the narcissist or with the person putting the boundary down. Maybe they have unresolved issues in holding firm to their boundary. Which one would it be? Well, it's, it's both, actually, okay. because you've been taught that doing anything and wanting anything for yourself is selfish. Uh, so, uh, oh my God, how can I do that to him? Because I could put myself out more and I could tolerate this. Um, so they feel really, we, they feel really guilty about saying, no, I could actually hurt this person. I could look like a bad person. Maybe I'll become selfish. So in actual fact, you need to be doing the work on your own guilt and shame beforehand. That is a big part of the whole boundary thing. Oh, yeah, because now we're talking about us being, we must be responsible hmm. and not keep shifting the responsibility or expectation of a good relationship with the narc. But the more we become responsible in the relationship that we actually want, I'm just, I'm not really making a statement. I'm, I'm kind of asking a long question. 
So if we want a certain relationship, we need to start doing that even if we have to still be in a relationship with the narc because eventually they're going to be gone. Yes. Well, and you, the more you have boundaries and the more you assert what you want, mm -hmm. or, well, the more you assert what you want in what is acceptable to you in some areas, the better it works. There are also times when you, the easiest thing is frankly to play them at their own game. Uh, so, hmm. okay, now you get, you, you got it. Uh, school is open. Teach me that. Right. What, is, what does that mean? Um, well, sometimes you cannot tell them what you want because they'll make sure you don't get it anyway. So uh, okay. if you really want to change holiday arrangements or something because some, you, there's something you really want to do, mm -hmm. you don't tell them that. You tell them that when it's their week, You've okay. got this fantastic opportunity come to come up that you've always wanted to do, to go away with the girls or something. Got and it. then they'll go, oh, I can't do that week. Yeah. So they change the week. You get what you want. Yeah. But um, you can never ask. And, well, okay. Now I have to go. Yeah, something you said in one of the videos talking about this very subject. You said, you were talking about real men at the time, but this applies to narcissist, male or female. You said, do not, rather, don't do playground stuff. Don't yes. play emotional abuse. Real men don't play playground stuff. They don't do emotional abuse. That, mm. same, that applies to whether it's men or women. But we mm. also have to make sure that we understand how the game is played from their perspective mm. and don't tell them things so they can sabotage what we're trying to do to be exactly. happy or productive. Yeah, that's right. Um, the playground stuff is really more the, I hate you, nobody likes you, nobody ever will, which they all visit on you. But this is, yes, when you're communicating with a narcissist, you've got to communicate thoughtfully. What do you want them what do you want them not to know? That's hugely uh -huh. important. Okay. And if you want something, don't ever rely on them to agree to it or because they're going to be nice. They won't be. That's they not will. what to expect. Yeah. So you've always got to bear in mind, if they're going to sabotage it, if I put it this way, how do I say to them something that I get what I need to get in terms of the children or whatever. Right. If they're seeking information, don't be willing to give them that information unless you're going to divert them to go somewhere yes. and spend time looking somewhere else while you're trying to do something productive. Yes. Because if it's productive, they want to sabotage it or yes. destroy it. That's okay. right. And as a general principle, keep your communication as limited as possible via the pigeon, which is a very interesting little bird. Yes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Pigeon came up here as I'm scrolling way back here. Um, uh, Vanoy said, my Pigeon relationship. She likes that. She mm. loves that. Uh, somebody said, stool Pigeon, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay. Uh, they love the idea of the Pigeon. They think that is genius, Bernice says. Uh, others here, there's so much. I'm, uh, I, if I missed your comment, uh, don't... Uh, don't feel bad in the moment because I actually take a screenshot of everything that's said and I will be making note of it and uh, reach out to you after the show is done or over the next week or so. So don't feel you came to the show and you weren't heard. Uh, I appreciate everything. Uh, assert your boundaries, uh, Vinoy says. Um, mm -hmm. Natasha, uh, I'm saying it, no, Anastasia. i got to stop calling this woman the wrong name. Anastasia says exactly, be responsible for your own life. Mm -hmm. that's uh, a statement that a lot of people can sometimes find hard to swallow uh, they can was that a question by the way <laughs> when it comes to the the second half of this uh hard to swallow when it comes to dealing with a narcissist because it 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 seems much easier to blame the narcissist if they don't know how to gray rock or if they don't know how to deal with them if they learn how to navigate around a narcissist, is it much easier 
to start living our life and be responsible for it? Um, I don't think it's easy when you've been in a traumatic relationship because you have a load of learned helplessness to shed. So if this whole thing is about learning how to step into your own life, own your own life and live it responsibly. And get away from the learned helplessness? Yes. And that learned helplessness is such a big thing. Um, narcissists tell you how useless you are, how incompetent, how you can't think for yourself. So I've known, I've worked with people who are really right at the top of the prof professional tree. They've been fantastically competent in work. Mm -hmm. That's what right. people have seen. Yeah. But actually inside themselves, they think, thank God I'm fooling people out here because they've got oh, wow. imposter syndrome. And at home, they are literally doormats. So they don't even see the evidence that if they reach the top of their tree and they're highly respected, right. they must be very Do competent. Must be doing something right. Yeah. Um, but you really do get end up with learned helplessness. Uh, that you have to refer to your lord and master or mistress for everything. Because they, ha I mean, literally, when I was doing, writing my first book, mm -hmm. my ex-husband had a more important opinion about what I was writing than I did. It was wait, actually... You, an wait, he was your ex-husband, though? He was my husband at the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I get, yes. you. I get you. Go ahead. Yeah, he was my husband at the time. And I was writing it in a language that he didn't speak, but he still knew more about it than I did. Than you did. Than yes. you did. Mm -hmm. True story. That has to be that had that has to be frustrating for those who are still going through that or beginning their journey. But realistically, I just have to ask you, emotionally, what was that like to have somebody trying to tell you when they were not the expert? in the arena that you were already in? Well, I'd been in it for a while and I'd been used to it from my father. So uh, it just felt like, it just felt like a tank was rolling over me, actually. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I, I get a, a number of people who are watching these programs for the guests and they're just beginning the journey. Mm. And they're not understanding what it means uh, they see the game playing that happens by the narc. They don't want to be the narc. They don't want to know if they start doing this or not telling the truth, and they're not they're not being honest. And maybe they they want to be honest. Maybe they had a toxic family background. It goes on and on and on, mm. left, right, up, down. They feel pulled in many directions. Let alone their compass, emotional compass, seems like it's broken. Yeah. For the for those individuals, if you could please. If they are trying to find a sense, a center of gravity for their life, one, two, three things that they need to keep in mind when it comes to living their life during or after emotional abuse, what are some things that they can take away, almost like a quick reference that you could pass on right now? Uh, well... The fact is that all you have to do is literally put one foot in each, in front of each. Imagine manage one day or one hour at a time. You have to try and be kind to yourself. Um, the best resource that I have found, which I've been using with people for as long as I've been doing this, and I've done it with women in English refuges, refuges that shelters with no money, no place to go, who are literally mm -hmm. at rock bottom, is that they start by doing their 20 celebrations a day. And that means literally getting themselves a, an exercise book and a pen which everybody can run to 
and at the end of their day writing down 20 things they have to celebrate. And yes, it's at a time when they feel they've got nothing to celebrate. But that is a very cheap and effective way celebrations makes you stretch yourself and there is uh, it is finite sometimes when you're journaling and you don't know why you're journaling you can lose it and the other thing that I'd love to share which is um, a great story of hope a friend of mine was in a relationship with a poisonous man in another country where he had managed to run through all her money she had a young child, there was no way of getting out, and he was poisonous in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And she said, What you know, she was at rock bottom, and she said, What can I do for myself? And I said, Be kind to yourself, do one thing a day that makes you feel good. She said, I can't, I've got a baby, I don't have any time, I don't wow. have any time for anything. And we said, we got round to the fact that she would have a hot bath for five minutes at the end of the day for herself. Three months later, she'd left him. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that she had this hot bath. And then she's British. So she had to take a cup of tea into the bath with her. Okay. And then she had to have a bicky, a biscuit okay. when she was in the bath, yeah. uh -huh. a cookie. Uh -huh. And then I think she started to read in the bath. And that restored a sense of self. Yeah. It was a tiny thing. It was a thing that it, she could do, but it gave her enough sense of self and enough sense of being comfortable in her own skin that she left. So I would Love urge it. anybody to do that one small thing, whatever it is for you. I love it. I love it. Uh, no matter how many technical difficulties we have, uh, I am learning so much from you. I have notes all in front of me. This is no slight on any other guest that has, has come through the show up to this point. But I have learned so much from you. But I, I need to pull in uh, some more questions here from everyone that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. here. I just need to double check something here. Yeah, you have a whole lot more that's here. Um, all right, so you did that one. Uh, yes. You have a, you have some more questions. There's one I just put up there. Why do narcs always have weepy stories to tell the kids about themselves? Because they know the power of a good victim story. Oh, wow. They will always rubbish you and wow. call you a victim if you're hurting, but they know how easy it is to work someone over with a good victim story. And when you, we, the victims, are in being victimized, we don't do it very well. We get all snotty and tearful and ugly with swollen faces and pathetic. But the narcissist, because he's play acting or she's play acting their great victim story, they can do it with so much pathos and a little note of heroism there. And it works so well. All right, good point. Uh, I'm just going to keep the questions coming to you there. Here's another one about their health finances. Always a mess when you ask. But they stash money in Swiss bank accounts or other places. They stash money. They but sure their health do. finances seem to be a mess. Go right ahead. Uh, well, there's not much to say on that. Narcissists will always make sure that they have money for themselves. They will never be generous in the end with you. Um, they're always withholding. They withhold money. They withhold love. They will withhold anything they can. It's just standard. And so um, one of my lessons, which I urge everybody to do, is always have separate separate finances with a partner there's your money which you do what you want with there's my money which I do what I want with and there's the money that we both put in the same percentage of our income 
into yeah. the house money. And it's yeah. not the same amount, it's the same percentage, because if one of you is learning, earning three times as much, it yeah. can't be the same amount. Yeah, you, you, you sound like my parents. No wonder they They're died. Right. They died together. They, they not died together per se, but they stuck together to the end because mm. they never mixed that up. Yes. But uh, they made sure that it was understood. They didn't lose their their individuality mm. uh, just because they got married. Um, yeah. There's so much happening on the screen. Uh, somebody said yes. They stash and steal. Uh, this all makes sense. Dated a man for almost a year uh, and a half recently. I uh, guess then they didn't find out much. Uh, they will take the kids, but not for the reason of love. Yeah. Uh, somebody said there's a, it's, a, it's like 3 a.m. in Indonesia, and they're still watching you. They're watching us discuss this. Wow. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. <laughs> See how popular you are? It's amazing. I'm or so did they come for basil? Did they come for basil? Is that what? I'm sure they did. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I can get to is, is he finished eating, or is he just? No, he and Monkey are still. Oh, yes, okay. So monkey, with monkey. Uh, somebody said they are they are so greedy. Uh, their perfection, yes. sob. Yes, per, they perfected sob stories. Yes, um, yes. That's just amazing. Okay, I have to tell you um, this. I need your thoughts on this because it's stuff that you said. Um, you mentioned to a group of ladies that we a woman cannot hide her neediness. If she shows it, a man will sniff it out, especially a, an abuser, that yes. they can't hide their neediness even under, you said, can't hide it with your hair, is what you said. That wow, we need that to step. Yeah, it was a really great quote. I, quote, I saw it and I went like, whoa, she needs to, you need to revive some of this uh, material you got <laughs> from eight, nine years ago. Uh, you even oh, said please. what a woman needs to do instead is step into her confidence. Yeah. Stop being emotionally dependent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this whole neediness thing, um, you've got to understand that narcissists um, see things very clearly. That, you know, different people see different things. If you're skilled in an area, you'll see things that another person won't. I was an Alexander teacher for some years, and I've got a much better eye for how people move than other people would have. Narcissists have a much better idea for how your wounds show up in your body uh, set, in your facial expressions, wow. in your tone of voice, in your hesitations, and so on. So you can pretend to be something that you're not. You can pretend to be you know, cooler and more laid back, they'll get they, you. They pick up on that. They totally pick up on it. That's why it, you can't just fake it. You really want to work you, it through. You want to heal yourself. Because after all, why wouldn't you want to be whole and happy? Yeah, you know? got that right. Yeah, because if yeah. not, then they're looking and they find it and they're going after it. And um, yeah. Now you're dealing with them and the stuff from the past. Um, what else we got here on the screen? I'll, I'll go to the screen right now. Um, do narcs have to be diagnosed even if they display behaviors of being one? I think this is, I think that's not actually the question. I okay. think the question is, do I, can I really believe this person is a narcissist if they've not been diagnosed? And if they're uh, not a narcissist, is this relationship likely to be viable? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that is, if they are showing enough of the behaviors of a narcissist to make your life a misery, and they're not prepared to change, and they enjoy hurting you, mm -hmm. whether you have a diagnosis or not is irrelevant. They are not fit to be around you. Uh, you have another one here. I think it's not about them finding it and going after it. I think it's about us saying bye-bye. In other well, you words, don't, go ahead. You, you don't have to say bye-bye if they haven't come at you in the first place. Uh, I see what you're saying. Uh, narcs uh, can, see, can see clearly what our insecurities are. So that's why we must heal and be whole, similar to what yeah. you were just saying. 
yeah. uh, to us there, that uh, we need to have a clear idea of what we want. This is uh, another quote from one of your videos. Uh, you mentioned uh, it's important to have these three things um, uh, that a woman needs to keep in mind. She needs to keep in mind that she has a clear idea of what she wants in a partner. That was the first one you said. Mm -hmm. The second thing was that a woman needs to not believe they deserve, uh, rather a woman often um, thinks to herself that she doesn't deserve very much. Uh, she often thinks that she doesn't mm -hmm. deserve something good. And then the third one was you highlighted that sometimes a woman or a man can feel that they need the opposite sex, uh, a man or a woman in their life, to boost their their self confidence, to boost yeah. their self confidence. Uh, any thoughts on any of those? I stand by all of them happily. That's very good. I was going to say this is a cross examination. I want you while you're on the witness stand. Do you deny any of these statements that you made in your video? These no. these are th these are very important points that you made. Yeah. Absolutely true. And the one about not just. In theory, um, many, many women have said to me, I know I deserve the best. And they know it with their heads. But when you really dig a little bit, the heart is telling them that they've been taught that they didn't deserve and they've never really thought they did. We are going to have to stop in a few minutes because my battery is just about to go. Yeah, uh, when it comes to people wanting to connect with you and they expect you to help them. Mm. You can't make a new human being, correct? I can't, but they can. <laughs> and I can there help you go. them to do it. There you go. Yeah. How is it that you can help them to do it for those who have never met you, which I have a lot of people coming to watch these shows and uh, they're just starting their journey. How is it that you can be of assistance to them. I could say it, but then I'm going to be like your PR guy because I, I firmly believe in you. But Thank from your you. own mouth, I'll let you say it to, to those who are just finding you and this channel and maybe your website. How is it that you can help women and men uh, find what they need so that they're not victims of emotional abuse? So this is Elizabeth Gilbert statement that, says a lot we all have a lot of treasures hidden within ourselves and the question is whether we find them well when you've been in emotional abuse not only are those treasures hidden within yourself but you've got shed loads of rubble on top of them so my job is to help clear the rubble and well to help you clear the rubble and it is cleared and then to help you find those treasures and believe in them that's what I would say I'm good at. You are. Just as modestly. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was about to say that. Okay, that's the most modest I think I've heard you say. I was, I was, I'm just going to say it. That was beautiful. That was lovely. And that was, that was the sweetest thing I've heard you say. I was waiting for the shotgun. <laughs> uh, I really was. Because I'm, I'm listening to you and people, of course, they're watching this or watching it back. We'll watch it back and see my eyes bouncing back and forth. You're speaking and the screen is going crazy because people are telling are saying how much they love you and so forth. Uh, she's an expert. And I'm, no, I think it's beautiful because you're saying it in such a modest, beautiful, lovely way and the way that you're doing it. And the screen is blowing up. You know, thank you, Dr. Annie. We love you. I mean, it's just I love this connection that you have with the people that follow you and the ones that have just found you today. And I appreciate the time we spent together. You make me smile. You make me laugh. You're a very, very discerning woman. Uh, I could never imagine anybody pulling the wool over your eyes. You remind me in many ways uh, of many friends that I uh, have and had uh, come in contact with uh, who I learned from. I learned a lot from you. You will find out if you periodically pass through my page because I will be posting things that I've learned from you. I have so many notes from today. Um, and we survived the internet glitches. We need to go, everybody. Thank you for coming in and writing everything you're writing right now. Uh, Annie, I'll just read a couple before your battery dies. Right. Great, inter great Can interview. Can I say something before you do? Yes, go ahead, please. Because I would like to say that it's, you know, what a pleasure it's been to chat with you and to be interviewed by you. I think you do a fabulous job. 
And I think it is real credit to you that you get the best out of the people you interview. Mm. Interviewing is an art and you do it really well. So I just wanted to put that Thank out. Thank you very there. much. Thank yeah. you. You're so kind. We better go. Um, there's so much happening across the screen. Everyone's saying good night to you. They're saying they love you. Um, they're going to follow you. There's so much happening here. Thank you so much. You've helped a lot of people today uh, well, that were here, you. and we'll see this later. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Thank, thank you, Annie. You. Goodbye to everybody. Love you all. Annie, please take care of Basil, and we'll see you again. Thank yes, you. Bye-bye. Thanks bye, for doing thanks, this. Steve. My pleasure. Bye.